Christy Watts was known for her upbeat personality as a co-host for the 700 Club. She could be doing this with me, and can I put these bands down? One more time, come on. But after her divorce, Christy was anything but joyful. Many of us uh, who've experienced divorce, it's an excruciating, painful situation. That pain left her discouraged and disappointed in her faith, the very faith she shared on air with millions of viewers. In her book, Talk Yourself Happy, Christy reveals how she found true happiness after heartache and shares how she used her mind and her words to radically change her future. She's back. <laughs> Welcome. It's so great to have Terry, you. Terry, I can't tell you how I'm so thrilled to be here with you, and especially with you, because you're just the bomb. Yay! <laughs> we do have fun when we're together. We do. We do. <laughs> hey, I love your book, Talk Yourself Happy, because you have a gift of taking things God's trying to teach us mm -hmm. and making them palatable with yeah. laughter and, and a lot of good wisdom in between. Yeah. This didn't come the easy way. Girl. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. When people see us on television, whether we're, you know, Christian ministers or, or mm -hmm. television people or whatever, they think our life is perfect. Yeah. And it's so far from it. We go through the same pits and the valleys and the ebbs and flows like everyone else. We just sometimes have to get in front of the camera and smile when sometimes our heart is broken. And for but me, that happened. Out of that, Christy, comes yeah. such a rich well of of wisdom learned the hard way yeah. for sure but that's the yeah. stuff that sticks you know here you are you know you you marry a, an amazing guy and you all have a son i mean what what could be more wonderful yeah. and then your life falls apart the moment you have that baby i mean most people yeah. at least have a little respite yeah. in there but i mean for you it was like from the get-go yeah. tell me about the faith walk at that time and what God taught you and put you through? That's a good question, Terry. And you know, it's interesting. It wasn't just the divorce. It was all the things that came around yeah. with it and then continued to culminate as the years yeah. went on. And what people don't know is that I had my son on a Thursday, came home from the hospital Saturday. Sunday, my ex-husband walked out on us. Yeah. And one of the last things he said to me was two things. One, I never loved you. Mm. And the second thing he said was, you used to be so pretty. Look at you now. Wow. And my body was swollen. I had just given birth to the baby. And it was all these emotional things. So it wasn't just the divorce. That was the beginning of me learning about the power of words, mm -hmm. the words that are spoken to us and how we take those words in and how they begin to define us. Well, we start to repeat those negative words in our head ourselves. Right. That's one of the things you write about right. is coming to the place where you can stop and let God kind of put you on rewind and learn to speak words differently because there's power in what we speak. There is. And you know, I kind of got to the point where I went through the not enough syndrome, yeah. not good enough syndrome. I wasn't pretty enough, thin enough, spiritual enough. Mm -hmm. um, who would want me? Surely and, the problem is me. Right. Yeah. Surely the problem is me because when those words are spoken to you, that's mm -hmm. what you kind of hold on to. And that's what I did. Yeah. But it was through the journey of, um, the rabbi, Jesus, the yes. teacher, teaching me yeah. who I am in him, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And here's the truth, Terry. I would be on the 700 Club, and, and my joy was real. My yeah. smile was real. My love for the Lord was real. But it wasn't enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I realized was that joy came from a place of circumstances. Mm -hmm. But when those circumstances crashed and burned, God wanted to teach me what true joy, what true happiness was. We don't get there from here without going through the valley. Mm. I mean, it, I just really yeah. think it's not yeah. possible. Yeah. But then on top of that, Christy, you had Chase, who is yeah. such a love. Yeah. I mean, he's just the joy of your life. And he always has been. I mean, yeah. he's just been such a great kid yeah. from the get go. But then to have to teach, you know, yeah. who your biological father is, why he isn't here, right. who God is, he's going to make a way for you. I mean, as a mom, there must have been such dark moments for you. I'll share one of those dark moments with you. Um, years ago, when I said that my ex-husband left, and I was divorced for years, and I thought that that chapter was closed. Something yeah. that people don't know is that my ex-husband wasn't a part of our life. Yeah. So it was just my son at and all. I. At all. Yeah. At, when he walked out, he walked out for good. Mm -hmm. 11 years later, I was already in this place of, Lord, what are you doing in my life? Yeah. 
And I get a phone call after 11 years, and it's his voice on the answer machine. And he says, Christy, I need to come see you and tell you something. Now, mind you, Terry, my son had never met his father. Mm. I hadn't seen this man in 11 years. Well, mind you, you don't know what he's going to tell you. How do you, how do you prepare for that? Right. And what he told me rocked our world. Share that. He called and said, Christy, I have stage four cancer and I've been given three months to live and I want to come see you and your son, our son. And my first reaction, Terry, was this. My son has never met his father. Do I let (laughs) him meet him and then he dies? Or do I not let my son meet his father and he dies? Mm -hmm. What do I do? Yeah, big questions. Right. Big choices. These are when it's not just about right or wrong or good or bad. It's about what would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. And seeing as God sees, loving as God loves. Forgiving. Forgiving as God forgives. (laughs) And here's the truth of the matter. That book isn't all sunshine and in glorious moments. God, that book was God teaching me how to have a heart for Christ. Yeah. And in that process, God gave me a heart to forgive and a heart to have compassion and a heart of trust so that I could look at the very person who hurt me the most and love him. Yeah. And teach your son to do that. And teach my son yeah. to do that. How did that work? How did he came? Yeah. They met. Yeah. What happened? Oh. <sighs> Another book. That picture, <laughs> right, that picture right there, just so that yeah. you guys know, is the very first time my son met his father. Wow. The wow. very first time. And what was so daunting about that situation was that, as I said, my uh, ex-husband had stage four cancer of the esophagus. So he was unable to drink or eat or even swallow his own saliva. So he went from 190 pounds to 108 pounds. Good grief. So the first time he meets um, our son, that's what my son sees. So we met at a, at a restaurant and I tried to prepare my son, but how do you prepare your son for that? And what was so crazy was because he couldn't even drink his own saliva, every five seconds, he would throw up into a cup. Mm. And so I'm looking at my son and my son's looking at me and I hold my son's hand under the table. And I tell you, it's something about the love of a child that's in God, that God's love is in a child because my son wasn't traumatized. He was okay. He just loved him. He yeah. loved his father right where he was. Yeah. And so, and you yeah. gave him closure to something very important yeah. in his life. That whole idea of who's my other parent? Where did I come from? Yeah. I mean, there are lots of kids who don't have closure on yeah. that for many, many reasons. But yeah. that was a gift that took some sacrifice on your part. Another thing that took some sacrifice was when your ex-husband died. Yeah. You went to the funeral with Chase, who had never really been a part of his family's life. Now, I mean, there are so many levels. Of- <laughs> Girl, there's so much stuff. Yeah, there's so much. Forgiveness yeah. and growth. But Christy, what I admire so much about you is you entered it with trepidation, but with determination. Yeah. And God honored that. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, Terry, I wouldn't have had the ability to do that years before. And because I went through the valleys and the pits and the challenges that I had to turn my life truly over to the Lord, Mm -hmm. that God used these opportunities to transform my heart. So talk about talking yourself happy because you're right. This is not a book that's full of fluffy sunshine and roses. But God has made a way for us in the midst of the hurt, in the midst of the pain to speak into existence his goodness and his positiveness. How did you do that? Well, here's the truth of the matter. When I sat on the 700 Club for 14 years, there was a level of arrogance in me that I didn't know was there. It was really easy for me to sit on the 700 Club and say, God is good because my life was good. It was very easy for me to say, trust God because it was easy to trust. Everything was going my way. But when I got through a situation or series of years where nothing happened the way that I thought it was going to happen, my trust was wavering. And I Mm -hmm. say this, my faith was faltering and my hope was depleted. And I thought how arrogant I was when I would minister to people and say, oh, it's good, it's good, it's good. Sometimes it's not good. Sometimes life hurts. And that's why we've got to hold on to the heart of God 
have the mind of Christ and love him. But I think of the prophetic word that was given to you mm. by a pastor who spoke to you and said, yeah. you know, God is going to use you to bring healing to the lives of people. Yeah. Your, that mandate came forward that day, yeah. but the training for it came forward through those years. What a great question. Thanks for reminding me that. In 20, 2001, I was called out in a church and he said, Christy, you're going to be a voice of hope yep. for those who are in adversity and those who are in pain. At the time, I remember when he stood me up and said that, I was like, I didn't get it because mm -hmm. pain and adversity were two things I really didn't know, hadn't experienced. Mm -hmm. But the voice of hope came from the Word, the Word of God, mm -hmm. the Word who is God, yeah. and the Word that I had to get deep down into the depth of my heart yeah. so that I could hold on to the promises of God. And aren't you glad he doesn't show you what the journey is going to be ahead of time? Girl, because I would have <laughs> said, Jesus, you better pick somebody else. You better pick somebody else. <laughs> Listen, I just want to say to those of you who are struggling, suffering in places of maybe what feels like darkness and loss, I want you to learn how to speak the promises of God over your life, and you can do that by picking up Christy's book. It's mm -hmm. called Talk Yourself Happy. It's about speaking forth the promises of God that are your inheritance as a child of God. This is available wherever books are sold. Get a copy. It's worth the read. Thank you. Girl, I love you so much. You are so wonderful. And can I say this one last thing? Thank you for being my friend. Oh. You always have, and I just adore you. It's a joy to be your friend, girl. It really is.